So they, they were helping you. They were helping. Thank you, Vic. It's, it's not, is, is this what we're going to do now? This is, uh, you know. It's, it's, I think, we, yeah, I, we right. probably. Are. You're going to have to help me with these things, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, well, it's a, very qu it's a very interesting question. What gender is your chatbot? Welcome to Your Call is Very Important to Us. Welcome to the second episode of Your Call is Very Important to Us. I'm Tom Brannan. And I'm Vic Cooper. And thank you for joining us in this journey into the discovery of why customer service still stinks or or sucks. We keep kind of going back and forth on. Uh, I think it kind of sucks. I, you know, I think we're still there. We haven't reached yeah. the point. Of we're going, trying to get to stinks. Yeah, yeah, that's we aspire to help the industry get to the level of stink. Um, yeah. So yeah, thanks again for joining us. And um, before we get started, I want to thank our friends at Nice. They're they've been so gracious to help sponsor some of these episodes. Without their support, you know, we we, we couldn't get this conversation going. So thanks to them. We'll be talking about them more uh, in this episode and on future episodes as well. But I want to give a shout out to those guys because they've been uh, they've been an awesome partner in this. But um, you know, as we talk about customer service and and you know why it stinks or sucks you know we're going to start drilling down into some specific examples some specific areas so the theme of today's show is chat and why does chat suck yeah i can't tell you how many times i'm like have a conversation with somebody and they're like oh what do you do and i was like oh i work with telephone systems and they're asking me well is that AI stuff, is that ever gonna work? I mean, I, every time I try to do it, it's like, I, you know, it's like I can only go so far and then I'm stuck trying to get to an agent like, you know, like I wanted to in the first place. Yeah, I mean, one would have hoped we would have mastered human chat before we started going into <laughs> robots taking over chat, you know? Yeah, I mean, I guess the potential is eventually they'll know more about us than we do, and they'll just be able to, you know, do stuff without us even having to ask. But right now, it just seems like another roadblock. Well, and, you know, in our personal lives, we love to chat. You know, most of our conversations, personal, even professional, are, are going to chat, you know, where we're, we're kind of avoiding phone calls, you know, a lot of the time. So for support, you know, this should be the perfect fit. This is a tool we already like to do. By now, we're all very comfortable with even, you know, into some of the older generations. Um, but man, it, it just it just seems like it's I, I, I get even more frustrated when I try to engage in chat. Yeah. Yeah. And you've I think having some kind of combination too is what we like, you know, it's like I'll, I have certain things that I want to do by chat, you know, simple things, simple requests, just like, you know, hey, can you send me that picture that we took at the beach or, you know, I, I'm on my way home or something like that. And it's so much more efficient just to add chat in there. But then when you're trying to talk to an organization, a customer service organization, then, you know, you've got so many more challenges. Um, just getting that, handling that chat and that phone call. So, you know, I think today's episode, we're, we're really going to try to understand a little bit more of what are the difficulties? Like, how does how is it, what makes this ho so hard? Well, you know, it, it seems like we've taken self-service and then we basically have a second version of self-service that's kind of a chat. So like if you want to check your account balance, you can go into the web or go into the app and check your account balance. And, and the, the early versions of chat have been basically, you know, a, a, an agent or even a chat bot in some cases, basically doing the same tasks. So it's basically replicating tasks that you could do for yourself. Now we have, you know, a low level agent kind of doing those tasks for you, um, which sounds OK, except if you've gone to self-service first and then you move into another channel that basically has the same capabilities, the same empowerment, they basically can only do those same things, then you end up just frustrating customers and just flat out wasting their time. Yeah, and then as I mentioned before about AI, you know, when we talk about chatbots are such an important part of the whole chat experience for companies. Um, and then 
really those chatbots kind of are replacing what we would consider in the past the IVR. You know, the press one for this, press two for that. And they're just trying to do it in a conversational way, but it's the exact same options. You know, so I could either press one or I could talk to this chat bot and say, can you do the ch ch press one task? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I think that's such a key point because it's kind of that disconnect. And this is going to be a theme we're going to talk about a lot in these podcasts. But it's the disconnect between what our enterprise is buying and what do end user customers actually want. So I, I've talked to, um, you know, some of the leading providers out there and they're, I'm asking them, what are some of your use cases for, for AI? And they're like, well, we're, we're kind of taking the, the telephony IVR and we're turning that into chat. And I'm like, what end user customer said, you know what, I wish we could replicate the IVR experience in chat. I mean, nobody's saying that. You know, and it's such yeah, and a- I think the, well, I think the, the underlying goal there often is we want more, we want more self-service options. We basically want to stop paying for agents and we want the chat bot to take the place of an agent. Now, whether a customer wants that is a very different story, you know, and I mean, I want automation if it makes my life easier, but if it makes it harder, then I don't want it. Simple as that. Yeah. And we've, we've, we've crossed the chasm of people now prefer self-service, you know, and, and I think it's not that it's that great. It's just, they've gotten so frustrated over decades of poor service that they're like, dang it, I'll just do it myself, you know? And so that's what we want. And, and so when we can't do it ourselves. And then we're transferred to a chat chat bot or a chat agent that's not empowered to do anything beyond self-service tasks. That's when we get incredibly frustrated. And I think that's kind of one of the underlying causes of this. Well, Tom, you recently wrote an article about chat in the industry. There's an industry kind of a, a newsletter called No Jitter that some of our listeners might be aware of. Um, and you were talking specifically about, uh, you know, kind of what makes a good chat and what makes a bad chat. Yeah, you know, I had a, I had a situation where I was porting a phone number from a um, telephony provider, a unified communications provider to a wireless provider. Um, so it's a you know, fairly complicated process and it involved two different things. Number one, I had to initiate the port. Um, which I was worried was going to be very problematic and take a lot of time. And the second thing I had to do was just downgrade my account. Like I didn't need a phone line on that account anymore. So I just needed them to downgrade it, just go back to the, 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 the basic uh, meeting level. So I, I went about this task and it was amazing because I, I chose to use chat. Again, I, I don't really want to call in and go through the frustration of talking to agents. You know, chat's much more, uh, is much easier for me. I'll start with the bad experience. This was the one where I was downgrading my account. So I log in, I try, I exhaust self-service. There was not an option presented to me. Um, and I probably spent 15 minutes and then I, I'm like, maybe I'm just an idiot and I can't figure it out. So I even Googled, you know, how to downgrade account. I went through all this stuff, logged back in, you know, looked through every possible menu option that I could and never could find any option to downgrade my account. Um, so I went into chat and um, the first thing that happened was I was asked several questions to make sure I got routed appropriately and, and I kind of get that. In this case, I don't think they're even using like an AI chat bot. It was just kind of that digital IVR, you know, press one for this. Do you need tech support or you need sales? Very, very similar type deal. Um, and then it just dead ended. Like it just, like it asked me a question, I answered it and then it just stopped. And I sat there for several minutes thinking, oh, well, maybe an agent's coming on. And it was just stopped. So I tried it again, exact same thing happened. You know, so now I've spent about, I'd say about half an hour at this point between trying to do it on my own and self-service, trying to navigate, you know, um, this chat bot. So I went in and I changed my answers a little bit to some of the questions the chat bot answered me. And I finally did get an agent. So I'm like, thank goodness. So anyway, the first thing the agent says, oh, well, you can do that easily on the website. And, uh, you know, like I'm, I've already tried that, you know. I Back to your point and your critique of yourself being an idiot and you can't figure it out. I mean, so it's insulting. It's insulting, insulting to say that? that it's insulting to say that you know. Oh, you should do this on the website because I've already tried that. It's insulting to me that they're telling me to do that when their own website doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, it's so typical that we take the blame ourselves for what was basically 
poorly programmed system. Yeah, so anyway, I finally get to the agent after all that. He says, go to the website. I finally convinced him that I tried to do that and the option's not there. Um, and he was like, well, um, let me put you on hold for about three minutes and I'll be back. So three or four minutes later, he comes back and said, you know, okay, we're working on it and um, I'll, I'll, I'll be right with you. And during that time, I got a phone call. So I took the phone call. The phone call lasted four minutes. So I was on the phone for four minutes. I wasn't looking at the screen. You know, I'd given him three minutes to look up the stuff. And then I, I go back to the chat after four minutes and I read where he has disconnected the call because I didn't respond within three minutes. Um, so I'm like, oh my God, you know, so I'm like, well, maybe. starting over. Yeah, well, the I dreaded you know, starting over, right? My, my hope is, well, maybe he saved, you know, this information or he got it done or another agent can look at the notes. So I go back through the chat thing again, make sure I fill it out the correct way so I don't hit a dead end. With the magic answers. Yeah, yeah, the magic, the magic code of uh, the cheat codes to, uh, yeah. to get to an agent. Um, so I finally do get to another agent and, um, you know, I'm like, the, I know how this technology works. I know in their support ticket system or CRM somewhere that chat gets saved. And so I told the agent, and it was a little bit of a test, but I'm like, hey, I was just on with this agent. If you could pick up where he left off, you know, that would be great. And they're like, I'm sorry, we, you know, I don't have access to that information. And, and I don't know whether she didn't have access to the information or just didn't want to navigate to that tab and try to read through it. And, and I get they're busy, they're multitasking, which is another problem. Um, so I do start all over from scratch, the same thing, you know, well, did you try the, oh, yeah, I tried the website. Okay, let me put you on hold for three or four minutes. And um, finally came back and completed everything, got it done. And, you know, maybe it took me a total of an hour to just downgrade my account. Here's the other thing, a little aside is, when they did that, I just figured this out because I've been having problems ever since. And um, they actually disconnected my license from my single user on that account, just me. I have it. So I have one account with one user and one license, and they disconnected the license from the user. And I was having all kinds of problems and then went back in the portal and it said, oh, well, you, you have an unused license. Like, well, okay. So yeah. why didn't you know that, Tom? All in all, a miserable failure. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I think there's takeaways of just broken systems that just, are broken and and the quality assurance you know isn't doing their thing to make sure that these dead ends don't happen maybe there was a change made and no one went through and tested all the different um avenues you know and and uh that was that's obviously a, a huge takeaway um, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other stuff but another big one to me was that they didn't have any intelligence that i had been on the website for 15 20 minutes trying to do this, you know, and I didn't even require AI. I mean, like, that's just kind of like some some basic stuff. But if you could put AI in it, um, if you could AI on that entire journey, then when the chat agent gets the, gets the thing, they're like, hey, this is what the customer needs. They need to downgrade their account. And they spent 15 minutes on the website. So we're thinking maybe they need some help and that's something that they can't accomplish on the website. You know, so that the agent doesn't insult me by saying, well, did you try the website, you know, moron? Um, so I think that's one that, that's really missing there. Was the chat option part of the website or did you yeah. have to go somewhere yeah. else? So no, you was were a, doing all this stuff and there was one of those little, you know, chat with us icons down there? Yeah. I mean, I'm on their website. I'm, I'm authenticated. I've logged in. This isn't like a, I just wandered off the street into a generic website and just hit the chat for sales or something. Like I'm logged into their account. I'm to my account. Like I am, you know, they should have all that information. They should know what my activity has been. And in some cases, they could even know that I tried Googling the answer. You know, if, if they're using cookies and stuff like that creatively, the AI could be like, you know, he even tried to figure it out on his own. It wasn't just, you know, uh, he didn't know how to navigate the website. So. You know, I, I think that's that's a missing point here. And just to give a little plug for our sponsor, Nice, it's one of the things they're really they've really been talking about for for a long time now is that this customer journey starts way before the chat. So I'm already kind of irritated when I go into the chat, you know, because this process has failed me. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of people, when they think about contact center, they think about well, it's just it you know it start that customer journey starts when they click the chat button. Right, or, or initiate some kind of interaction on a specific channel when really the, the job of the system is to understand 
you know, and aggregate up any sort of touch point with the customer, whether it's I browsed on the web, I, you know, I had a Google search, I, I chatted, I made a phone call, um, that sort of what we would have always called omni-channel yep. has been this sort of holy grail of call center design. And it's actually amazing how few uh, companies are able to do any sort of omni-channel. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it, the other thing is, is I mean, there, there's some kind of low-hanging fruit here, too. Like the, the agent was so eager to disconnect, you know, like, like uh, I don't know whether he was incentivized to, you know, to get off calls quickly, but he was uh, not going to stick around and wait for me to uh, to come back to the chat. And, you know, when you do chat, there, there's a certain degree where it is fairly asynchronous. There is this kind of, you know, and particularly with agents that are multitasking, like you, you ask a question and you know it may take a minute to get the, the question back, you know, based on experience. You know, they're not engaged with you one-on-one, so you know they're helping other people. So there's a little bit of, I'm going to send a question and then I'm going to do a little bit of work over here and then I'm going to come back to that. Um, and they certainly treat it that way, but when they don't allow you to treat it that way and start just cutting you off because you uh, stepped away for a couple of minutes, you know, that, that to me is, is maybe the worst part of this because there's almost like intent there to, to just have no patience and to like, you know what, if you don't, if you don't respond, we're, you know, you're out of here. You're yeah. Here. Yeah. And the agent, like you said, is probably incentivized to not to close sessions or, you know, it's all sort of depending on how is that agent um, either getting paid or, you know, or rewarded for what their behavior is. And if there's a reward for them to, you know, somehow drop the call, um, or, or sometimes, you know, it's just bad agent behavior, you know, where, where they don't know, they don't know how to handle your issue or, you know, if it's not an easy issue, then uh, I'm just going to disconnect that and let somebody else handle it. Do you, you think know, just give me a reason? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the other thing here was the second agent could not or would not look up the chat history. Um, you know, which do you think it could be? I mean, obviously it could be either. Um, but you know, I, I wondered, like, are they literally not capturing the chat somewhere um, that the agent has easy visibility to? Or is the agent just kind of lazy and doesn't want to go back through and, and read a, a chat transcript? Do you have a yeah. do you have a feel on? on uh, well, in my experience, it's you know we, we think oh they should have this wired, but in a lot of cases, it it just doesn't you know it's all they can do is sort of get the channel to work, much less get the channels to work together. Um, so I kind of give them the benefit of the doubt that, you know, and as somebody who's worked on these kind of systems, it's, it's hard. It's a hard thing to do. It's, it's not, it's basically the, the communication channels that we have are not really uh, built for the tasks that we're, that we're asking them to do. So you, you, in a sense, you have to add some sort of over, over, over system that is monitoring every touch point. And what system is that? And is it the CRM? Is it the telephone system? Is it the website? And, and then you have the, yeah. So I give them the benefit of the doubt because um, most of my experience, agents just, you know, they're there to do a job. And if they're given the right tools, they'll do that job. Well, I think, you know, my guess is the chat's captured somewhere, you know, it's just not easily accessible to the agent, you know. Come on, find my chat. We, where are you got to find my chat? Because well, I'm, I'm not putting all that stuff back in. Yeah, I mean, you know, they've, they've got, you know, they, they got the, the whip put on see them you, to, Tom. Just like, to hit their numbers and produce. And, and, you know, I think there's all that pressure on them. And then if you've buried this chat in some other application or in some, you know, hard to reach place when they've already got, you know, eight different browser tabs open to, you know, their billing system, their tech system, their, you know, um, this, this chat management queuing system, you know, like trying to dig out a, a chat scratch may just be, uh, you know, too difficult or just too timely a task, even if they could possibly do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've seen uh, agents will end up with eight screens of information that they're they're trying to deal with and sort through. And yeah, it can be more simple just to say, well, just can you give it to me again. But I mean, that's sort of a cardinal sin of customer service is asking people to repeat information. Um, and the only thing worse than that is asking them to start all the way over. Well, you know, it'd be interesting kind of in the perfect world with, with kind of AI of, you know, the AI being, and we're going to talk more about agent experience as well, because this is a huge, huge issue. Number one, it's kind of having a kind of single pane of glass that they can manage their tasks and have access to this information. I mean, that's, that, that's a huge one. But then also AI, when that second agent comes on for, for a little AI engine to come on and say, hey, this is Tom Brannon. He got disconnected from a chat. He's been working on this for like 45 minutes. He wants to downgrade his account. We've, we, you know, the we've deduced that from the the AI transcripts of uh, what he wants to do. The the last agent was didn't successfully do it. Here is the link to make that change for him. And then, oh by the way, I noticed that you didn't resync his license to his user when you did that. So you might want to make sure you do that before you hang up with them to make sure that everything's done. I mean, I think that's where we need to. You know, that's where I want to see AI leverage. Like the chatbot thing is kind of who really cares. But, you know, that's something that makes a big difference, you know, to an outcome like this, where it was a very poor, you know, customer experience. Well, I'm so curious now that you've described this, you know, terrible experience, which, you know, is so common. You said you had a good outcome. Um, you actually had uh, an experience that you would rate as, would I dare say, Excellent. It, it was excellent indeed. And, and this was the port part of the process, which, you know, I'm sure a lot of our listeners know how difficult ports are. They never go well. There's always hiccups. They take forever. Things get dropped. And um, this one was totally different. I, I went into uh, um, T-Mobile, logged into to their uh, um, uh, website, you know, so I'm authenticated. Um, I click on the chat button. And a chat bot comes on and says, basically, what, what do you need? And I was like, I need to port phone number bup, 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 um, to, um, to a line here. And so it's like, OK, I'll get an agent for you in a minute. The agent comes on and says, uh, happy to help you. Um, just I'll need your pen. That's all I need. And we'll, we'll get this knocked out. Um, so I, I provided my pen. And then the next thing I know, she's like, OK, we're ready to go with the port. And my first thought was, what if she's going to port the wrong number? Because she never asked me what number I wanted to port. You know, like I, you know, I don't. Now, are we still talking about AI? No, well, this is. get to an agent? Know, this is, you know, this is kind of human and computers talking together, you know, so. Because um, uh -huh. it's know, a she? It, How do you know it's a she at this point? Well, you know, I, you know, we won't get into um, my uh, biases of people's names and, and making gender assignments. We'll. Uh, We'll save that, but the, the, the point is the... Um, so they, they were helping you. They were helping, thank you, Vic. Is, is, that, is, is this what we're gonna do now? This is, uh, you know... Is, I is, think, yeah, I, we right. probably... You, you're gonna have to help me with these things, you know. Um, well, yeah, it's, a very qu it's a very interesting question. What gender is your chat bot? Yes. Anyway, moving along. Yeah. Boy, I, that's, that's, we need to do an episode on that. I think that would be... Uh, I think that'd be a lot of fun. But the, the point is, is that um, the, the, when the agent came on, you know, I wanted to verify the information because I was worried that she had the wrong information because she had not asked me what number I wanted to port. And she was like, no, I got it right here. And you were expecting to have to repeat yes. the information. Yes. yes. Yeah. And, and to the point that I, it made me uncomfortable that I didn't have to. Um, <laughs> Because I'm like, whoa, Can wait you a read minute. read that you back know? to me? <laughs> and then with my experience of 25 years of doing ports, I'm like, oh, my God, she's going to screw it up. And she had it perfect. So what had happened was the, the chat bot had come on and had collected my information. It had presented it to the agent in a format that she could read and understand and use during the call. Um, and within about two or three minutes of that, she says, your port's been completed. Um, and I'm just like, holy crap. Like, you know, you're what, shocked. Yeah. <laughs> I, out I, of I'm, your chair. I, I'm shocked, but I've noticed in the past with T-Mobile, there's, there's, there's one thing that makes them very, very different from everyone else. One is kind of that using chatbots that actually are, are providing value to the conversation, not just routing you to the right agent, but actually passing the information that it's collected along. And whether that's AI or just simple 
kind of chat logic, you know, um, uh, I don't know. But the, the bigger takeaway is T-Mobile does something really wonderful. They do persistent chat. Um, yeah. So the chat never ends. Like I just have a running thread with T-Mobile support. Um, and that's huge because if I had to step away for five minutes, I'm not going to get disconnected, you know. Um, and, and if an agent does leave the, the chat, another agent steps in and they just they just pick up where the other agent left off. You know, we we talk a lot about AI and chatbots and all this stuff, but persistent chat turns out to be one of the most useful, you know, functions in this whole industry. Yeah. Well, and it raises a very interesting question of like when you talk about a persistent chat, which really is a persistent conversation that you're having with your customer. So how persistent should it be? I mean, and how, what is the scope of all the communications that a company has with one of their customers? I mean, and in, in a perfect world, I would think a company like T-Mobile would want to have sort of some ongoing running, you know, record of everything, every interaction you have. I mean, I know I, I kind of have that with my friends and family. I can look back over, you know, a year of chatting to find some old photograph or an address or something. So you would think these companies are, are headed in that direction. You know, it's more persistence and more um, this sort of an, kind of an endless connection that they have with their customer. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, I think we've, I think we're getting to the point where we're starting to collect all that data. Because I think for a while, the data, number one, wasn't collected. Number two, from a telephony perspective, we weren't good at taking those phone calls and, and, and digitizing them, turning them into text, and then analyzing that text. Um, and, and we didn't really have that capability, now we do. Um, one of the problems is though, when these are all in different tools and there's different AI engines, you know, running each one, that it's just still very disjointed. But I think even having one record of just chat, just this this one singular channel, and to be able to have that for reference, so that um, when a new agent comes on, they can look at it. Or if you say, "Look, I had this problem last week," they're not like, "Sure, you did." They, they can actually just go through the chat and go, "Well, yeah, I see right here where you." Yeah, you guys spent an hour on this. That's terrible, you know. And and yeah, that that goes such a long way, you know. Yeah, and the number one complaint that we hear is, I, I I'm sick and tired of repeating myself, you know. Like if 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 we could solve that one problem, you know, um, people would be so much happier. And it's interesting. Right. You and I have been in this business combined probably 50 years. You know, we remember the CTI days and. You know, we, we thought that the days of, of having to repeat information would have died off, you know, decades ago. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely sort of on my wish list of, you know, don't, don't make me give you information that my computer has, basically. So don't ask me things that you should be able to get from the systems that we're working on. You know, and it's always interesting to see how, you know, on the one hand, these big companies have these incredible data sets and are able to, you know, all, you know, have this sort of what's been called surveillance capitalism. And they know all this stuff about us. But somehow then when it comes to customer service, they're, <laughs> they can't make that work. You know, it's like I, they can, you know, send me an ad for the, you know, for the shoes once I ask some Google about shoes for, you know, now until the end of time. But, you know, when I call in, they're like, oh, you like shoes? <laughs> like, yeah, like, it is on, crazy. People. It is crazy how if good you're gonna that technology me, is. Like, it? Use it for my advantage. Don't just take advantage of me. Yeah, it's so good at using it to sell stuff. Um, but for support, like yeah. we're, we're literally like, I have no idea who you are and why you're calling. But yeah. from a sales well, perspective. Well, and I think that... I, goes to the point that, you know, where's the money? Follow the money. And, you know, in sales is obviously, you know, a money generating part of an, any company. Whereas the classic view of customer service is that it's a cost center. That's the way, you know, it's like, just make this pain go away. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm going to trim your budget because I'm tired of paying 
for all this customer service. So yeah, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we like chat. We want to use chat. We want it to work well. We're just running into dumb chat versus you know intelligent chat. You know, um, you know, just some basic stuff. I think there's still a lot of work around policies for agents of how many simultaneous conversations do they have. Um, and then persistent chat, you know, can this persistent chat make that a little more palatable because you're not on the clock to, uh, to jump back over to the chat before the, you get disconnected, you know. And, and so I think there are these kind of trends um, as companies evaluate their chat strategy that, that become very important um, to, to how well that customer experience is. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I think we've done enough damage for today. Um, you know, have we I, chatted I, enough about chat? <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, I do want to dive into some of these topics, particularly, you know, things that, that as we were talking, the the agent experience, and you know, kind of looking at it from their perspective. We looked at it from the customer perspective, but what is the agent dealing with, and how many different screens, and how, how what are the policies that are that are kind of driving their behavior, and then how to make that a better experience for them, how to make these chats more intelligent, how to use AI to help coach agents through chats. I mean, I think, you know, we've talked about some of the big picture problems and I look forward in future episodes to kind of drilling in deeper into those, you know, individual areas. Yeah. And also kind of how do, uh, how do companies make the decisions about, you know, the quality of customer service that they're going to provide, the quality of chat, the investment that they're going to make. And I think that this really points to, you know, issues around leadership and I know that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about in the future is, you know, it's not just technology. It's actually, you know, somebody has to make these decisions to, you know, actually deliver. Like our goal is to deliver really good customer service to, to reduce the amount of effort that people have to go through in order to interact with us. Yeah, great tease for uh, for our next episode where we're going to be focusing on leadership with uh, Brad Cleveland. Super excited about that conversation. He's written a new book that's that's absolutely outstanding and, and is really a, a voice that needs to be heard because we don't spend enough time as an industry. We talk a lot about technology, but you're absolutely right. At the end of the day, you know, um, leadership's even more important. So um, we'll hope you'll join us on the on the next episode of Your Call is Very Important to Us. And um Thanks, Vic, and uh, thank you all for uh, listening or watching or however you're, uh, you're consuming this content. We, we greatly appreciate you. We want to hear from you. Um, so reach out um, and let us, let us know how we can um, engage with you. And, and uh, if you're interested in being a sponsor or, um, or if you have a customer service problem, you know, um, you know, we'd love to hear from you. So yeah, thanks. And, and if, you're, if you're only listening to this on audio, you're really missing out. I think you really should check out the video because the, the color of blue behind Tom yeah. is, yeah. I, it's like intergalactic. I know, where are you, Tom? Well, is, I, I, are, you, like, are you in another dimension or? Absolutely. I, I am in, and I can't disclose it. Um, I, ha, I have an NDA with, uh, with, I can't even disclose who the NDA is with, so. Um, yeah, so you're in, you're at some conference, hopefully in this solar system, right? Uh, yes, uh, I think I can disclose that. But uh, yeah, you know this mission to Mars stuff. Like you know, I'm already there. So if you must know, so yeah, and then I don't know if we can tease them too. It's like we're going to be uh, doing some stuff on VR, and you've promised to play some golf with me in VR, right, Tom? Yeah. Absolutely. So, so, so stay tuned for the your call is very important to us. Virtual reality golf league. I, I got to come up with the, the the abbreviation for that. But um, yeah, that's coming soon too. I got to order my golf club. You told me to order the little uh, little attachment. I haven't done that yet, so yeah. I'll get to work on that. All right. Awesome. Well, great talking to you, Tom. And you know, your call is really important to it me. It should, certainly should be. Every time you call me, it's really important oh. to me, Tom. Oh. Well, I appreciate that. It goes both ways. So, Awesome, brother. Listen, we'll see you next time. And all of you for uh, uh, out there listening or watching, yeah, we thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us today. Please make sure to subscribe to the podcast on the platform of your choice. Also, you can visit yourcallis.com for links to the podcast and our YouTube channel, 
where you can view episodes, like, and subscribe. If you'd like to contact us, you can reach us at info at yourcallis.com. Also, let us know if you've recently had a customer service fail that we might want to feature on a future episode of Your Call is very important to us. And we still have a few sponsorship opportunities if you'd like to support this important, ongoing conversation. Just reach out for more details. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Your Call is Very Important to Us. Your Call is Very Important to Us.